This is Zapier Central that promises that you can work hand in hand with AI bots and create AI agents, something I'm very interested in. Many big tech companies like Google just had a big presentation about their new focus on AI agents. Microsoft launched Autogen, which is a little technical for the normal person, as well as Crew AI being one of the most popular right now to do tasks on your behalf. It's clear people want AI agents but I feel like nobody solved this problem in an easy way. Therefore, I needed to test Zapier Central on one of my AI projects. I will rank it from one to five stars at the end of this video. And oh boy, was I in for a surprise. First, go to zapier.com central because this is where you can work hand in hand with AI bots. If you don't know what Zapier is, it can connect to 6,000 of your favorite apps and do actions for for you. When I saw this for the first time, I was pretty surprised because this is what I have been trying to do inside of ChatGPT with Zapier's custom GPT. So I knew all I had to do was click on try central today. Now that we're on the inside, you can immediately see that we have behaviors and data sources. Behaviors you can think of as custom commands. This is where you tell them what to do, a behavior is triggered, how to process or summarize the data, and which of all the available actions I should use. Data sources gives you data files, for example, Google Sheet, that they can analyze, summarize, and answer complex queries about your data. When I created my first bot, I immediately thought of what am I doing currently in my business that I can try to feed this bot. And I came up with a great idea. Currently, for the last few weeks, I've been creating this custom Python script that uses the Twitter API to scrape tweets of my favorite Twitter profiles. This is so I can easily see what gets the most likes so I know what people in AI are interested in. But I was wondering if Zapier Central could help me optimize this workflow for me. Because step number one for me is I need to run this code, then it updates my Google Sheet, and then I jot down some ideas that I get in this content master doc. I was thinking since it connects directly with Google Sheet and to Notion, I was wondering if I could use Zapier Central to help me with this task. So the first thing I did was to add a data source. I'm going to set up an AI salesperson in less than 60 seconds. It can call on your behalf and receive calls on your behalf. I'm going to go to Synflow AI and try for free. Step one, name Andy. Next, I'll add this prompt here where we can use any of these templates. And this is where the magic really happens. Look, insurance policy sales outbound, inbound B2B SaaS, even a churn prevention workflow. It gives it this mega prompt that basically teaches your AI voice assistant how to communicate. Apply prompt. Let's test our assistant. Hello, I am calling from Majestic Estates. I've seen you complete our form on the website about buying or renting. Do you have a couple of minutes to finish the request? Yeah, I'd love to. Great. Let's start. Are you looking to buy or rent? I want to rent. Great. In which location are you interested? right now in las vegas new york city las vegas got it how many bedrooms and bathrooms are you looking for two bedrooms one bathroom understood are you currently working with another agent or are we your first stop you're my first that's great we have noted your availability and will ensure our agent reaches out to you as soon as possible have a wonderful day thanks you're welcome wow <laughs> i can see why a ton of people are starting to use sinflow in their business and if you want to check it out as well click link in the description for a 14-day free trial thanks to sinflow for sponsoring this section of the video because step number one for me is i need to run this code then it updates my my Google Sheet, and then I jot down some ideas that I get in this content master doc. I was wondering if I could use Zapier Central to help me with this task. So the first thing I did was to add a data source. As you can see, you can add Google Sheet.
sheets. Just click on this button if you never set it up before and connect your Google account. Then you can select the data source by clicking here. And I wanted to check TweetRain. I just clicked on add data source and it was added directly to the bottom. I was actually wondering if this worked. So I went down to the message and I said, can you give me the top 10 tweets based on likes from the TweetRain data set? And the bot started going into action. But sometimes it said that I don't actually have a data set. So I just kept asking it more. Like for example, do you have a data set? And then it identifies that it actually has it. I realized that it still has some issues that it needs to resolve. So I kept asking it about the 10 tweets and just like that, it started to write for me. And I was fairly surprised by the result. Not only did it go through my data set, but it handed it to me on a silver platter and included all the relevant information that I want. This got me pretty excited because it meant that we had have a sort of working prototype and I could move on to the next step, which was to try to get it into Notion. So all I did was click on the plus icon in the bottom here and create a behavior. I saw that in the top, we had the instructions where we can tell your bot what to do when it's triggered. We had a trigger action that we can add to when it actually wants to trigger and an action to get it to do a behavior for us. So I simply started by clicking on the add trigger button and I saw that they had this new option when I messaged the bot. So I clicked on it and then it wanted me to add a specific phrase or keyword. Since I wanted it to create a page in Notion, I said trigger create page. Now I just added the trigger. Next, I wanted to see what actions I could actually do. So I clicked the add action button and here is where Zapier's infrastructure really shines. You could easily do this in Gmail or Google Docs, pretty much wherever I wanted. But I wanted to stick with Notion. So I clicked on it and got a couple of results, including create page. I just had to sign up my Notion account and I saw that they had this new option where AI can generate a value for this field. You see that they have other options here as well, but I wanted to test out the AI generative fill. The same as the content, I wanted AI to generate this as well. So I just clicked on add action. Now the last thing to do was to give it some instructions. So I just told it based on the user's input, create a page in Notion. Since usually automation is fairly complicated, I wasn't sure if it would act actually even be able to work. So I just clicked on the test behavior, opened a new thread in the side. And as you can see, it is a Slack like message reply where it actually does things on the right side. And what was very different was that it actually started asking me a question to refine my workflow. It asked, do you want the parent page to be workflow automation? And I actually didn't want to have it there. I wanted it to go into the master content doc. So I wrote, can you put this into the parent page of master content doc? And what surprised me was that it saved my feedback and it said the user wants the new page to be created under the parent page master content doc instead of workflow automation. And I'll show you where this is saved in just a second. It then gave me the preview as well as a new question. Does this setup look good to to proceed. I said yes. And what it did was truly amazing. It had created my page. I went to my notion looking for it and as sure as I know that your uncle's name is Bob, it had created a page. Now this page wasn't really that impressive. So I knew I had more work. I realized that my data set had a bunch of duplicate posts. And I would also like to have this April 10 format in the beginning of the title. So I went back to Zapier to see if there's anything I could change. I went to my behavior and I realized that this was from the previous feedback step because I wanted to add the date I wrote at the beginning of any new Notion page, start the title with today's date formatted in this way. I then went up to the right to turn this behavior on. I was excited to see this work. So I went to the message and started creating my prompt. I wrote, can you read my tweet rain database and take 10 of the most liked tweets without any duplicate post? Then trigger create page. I clicked send and of course it said, I'm sorry, but I don't have the capacity. By just prompting it that it actually has and it's actually capable of doing it, 
it started going to work. It came with a solution that was fairly unexpected. It wanted me to create a new behavior. As I think that's not what they intended for, I kept messaging it back and forth until it was able to give me this amazing list. It wasn't perfect as many of the like counts were fairly low at the end. But since I just wanted to create a new page and test my new trigger, I went down to the message and said, trigger create page. Of course, it didn't want to go on the first try. So I just tried again. But this time I added the trigger create page behavior at the end of the prompt and it didn't work again so I tried another prompt and it didn't work again so I went to the top right and clicked on a start fresh chat at this point I was pretty frustrated but I knew that I could get it to work I wasn't sure if this create a page in notion behavior is actually indexing or not so I wanted to create a new behavior this time making the trigger word create page in notion with the same action as before I wanted to test it again to see if there was something wrong with Zapier server and instructed it to add today's date at the beginning of the title. It did it correctly and asked me if I wanted to proceed. I wrote yes and it actually managed to do it. I turned on the new behavior, deleted the old one and tried my new trigger phrase. To my surprise, it worked right away. As you can see, it was writing all of this to the right and just like that, it actually managed to do it. But as this page was as valueless as a medium rare T-bone steak to a vegan, I needed my own data in here. So I went back to the chat and tried to read my database. I created another prompt and crossed my fingers. To my surprise, it started working right away. It was able to give me a fairly decent list, but I think my data set has a lot of duplicates and that I need a bunch of more prompting. The problem, however, was that it didn't have any links. So I wanted to ask it to provide me more data per post. And to my surprise, it actually started creating a database type table. We did have a few duplicates, but I was dying to see if we could actually get it to come into Notion. I wrote a prompt with the correct trigger words and crossed my fingers again. It started going to work. I clicked on the reply. And of course it told me that there seems to be a misunderstanding and the page that it creates looks like this. I was on the brink of giving up, but I never give up. So I copy pasted all of the data, pasted it in here and added my magic trigger phrase. It went right to work and I clicked on view the page. Of course that didn't work. So I copied the answer from before thinking there was something wrong with the tables and added my trigger phrase. With little to none expectations, I click on the page and it actually managed to do the task. But I was left with a bad taste in my mouth. Not only was it hard, complicated, and I ran into a ton of technical issues, but it's just way harder than if I would do it myself. So I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt and try one last time. Could this actually be added to my workflow? I went up to the three buttons in the top, started a fresh chat. I copied the working prompt from before, this time actually giving me the ones with the highest likes, but only giving me six of them. I copied my trigger phrase and sent the new prompt. And added added with all the tweets and it thought I meant all of the tweets that is in my data source. I clicked on view the page with another failed attempt. I'm glad Zapier is innovating, but my take on this software is that it's not ready. It's not reliable. It doesn't really understand the chat and there are way too many technical hurdles for me to recommend. For now, I'm giving it a three stars and I'll be using other AI agents. If anybody from Zapier is watching, watching, feel free to send me an email when your product is finished for a new video review. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to learn which AI tool is the best and I'll see you in the next one.